Hello and welcome to part number 12. And this time I want to explain the set extension example that I have introduced here in this area with the dragons out of the windows and the flags in the schnauz. And on the end, I will show you how you can set up these little pyramids on the head because they are very important to check your scene. And that's not an uh, that's not a native part directly in Cinema 4D, but it's very simple to set up and to reduce the amount that you have. Okay, when you take a look to this little guy here, you see instantly something that I have pointed out before. And this is a marker based on the distance that is now much more visible, that is completely wrong here. It is not as big as these ones and it moves. Now we can see that much more clearly. And that's the target of those guys here. Again, on the end, I go a few minutes into setting up this. Yes, that's more like a tutorial than a making of, but how to explain it otherwise. Anyway, what I have done here, I have first created a mesh where I want to have my set extension. And I had the idea to put these dragon heads then finally into a kind of a window. So I needed something that works. And surprisingly, we have windows here. We have all the data here. And don't get fooled by the blurry quality here. This is only the proxy. This here is full resolution from the plates. And what I want to show you here is, of course, first of all, I switch the dragons off. So I have here a little bit camera mapping, camera projection inside. So the windows are really there, at least the illusion of it. And what I needed to do here first was, of course, to find an area where they are closest. That would be here. But then you can see I do not get everything from them. So I have to make a call here where I want to have my projection camera. And that was on frame 16, if I'm not mistaken. And then I could place here my polygon into the right area based on my little pyramids here. I knew exactly where to place them. Sometimes you have to go back and forth a little bit to make it really sit here. And then I used the magnet to just distort this a little bit so it's not that uh, ZG-ish, totally straight. And of course I have an alpha channel here on the border to have not that super sharp edge on this corner here, so to match more this area here. So with frame 16, normally it would work like the patch, but in this case, of course, I have from the foreground already frame number 16. And frame number 16 is, of course, in 6K available or in 4K or whatever I wanted. And so I could hop over to Photoshop, use the vanishing tool and go instantly in painting this stuff here up to the top, change a little bit and then with the stamp tool go here a little bit, here a little bit, paint, put some shiny signs inside of that, go back, project everything with the frame 16 camera that I have copied on frame 16. And then I could just go with these guys here and move the window area a little bit in. All pretty simple. And again, we need an alpha channel for that. When I render this, it works pretty nicely and super smooth. Again, this here is very, very um, soft. <laughs> and you will see that we get now with using this area here, that we get the same light, we get the same texture, and it looks pretty much as it was there since ever. I used even here this bow and I changed it a tiny little bit, but the water that was running down here to create here these different colors, that was of course from the top down and so I couldn't change it here too much. Okay, that's pretty much all. <laughs> Very simple stuff. And I want to show you here of course frame 16, the picture that I have created. So what I have here, the windows taken from the bottom part here and the top part and created something. I painted over the edge here, put some more arrows here and some signs and that is pretty much all I did. Very quick, very fast. And of course the dragons just uh, had pulled out a little bit in the sculpting tool and in body paint I painted over it. I have to show that here of course. Dragons, bang, there they are. 
So that's pretty much all. And now I can tell you a little bit more about these little pyramids. To explain the pyramids, I go over into a scene that I have prepared already and I have here only one pyramid in it and all the features, I have copied them. There are quite some features here and to place on each null object here now one little pyramid would be a lot of work and the idea here is of course to have the pyramid with this origin point with the axis system on the tip and this is just a checkerboard set up here to some colors that are not too bright not too dark you might find something else. Okay, so what I do first, I click here on Auto Features, go then to Edit and to Select All Children. With the command click, I deselect the Auto Features and then I go already to MoCraft and call up here the Tracer. The Tracer itself is then set to Connect All Objects and then I get here this huge mess. Okay, so that is one step. The next step is to go then to Cloner, place the pyramid underneath and then I get here some of these guys. I go a little bit closer into that. And the next step is of course then to go to Cloner, to Object, to Object here again in the mode and track the tracer in. So now I should have here three of these guys or ten in this case all around. And what I want to have is of course that they are all just straight up. So aligned clones is not my idea. This works here nicely. And before I set all of these two vertices, I do something. I go here to Cloner, go to MoCraft, to MoCraft selection and just select here something. So I can go here, clear this, invert this and then I have already something that I can work. When I call up here the plane effector plane and this plane effector should be in the effectors then I can drag the selection inside of that effector and the parameters should be only for the scale and uniform and negative one bang they are all gone so now I can set up here in my object everything to vertices and <laughs> then I get all these guys here invert gives them all no chance to be there and they should be no but when I click here I can paint over it and delete all of them when you have that many my idea is to invert and then with the command click you can just paint them in just like that and when you have here the whole alley you go into it and then command click and wherever you need one you just paint over it with the command key down and of course you can go then in in transform and say we want to have that here maybe on 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.2 and then they get very small and little and exactly in the way you want to have it very fast very simple and again I need one I need one here I want to have one maybe here bang and they are there it's so simple and then you can check your scene with the time slider back and forth. That's pretty much all. Thanks for listening. Have fun with it. Bye bye.